Scottish Socialist Voice is in Edinburgh at the Scottish Independence Conventions event, Build, Bridges to Indy. After 2014, it seems like the majority of independence activists and yes groups appear to have backed the SNP. The only time the pro-independence message has been heard in the media since 2014 was when Nicola Sturgeon pursued a second independence referendum on the back of Brexit. This event at the Usher Hall represents figures from across the movement coming together to try and get activists talking to each other about what we need to do moving forward. This is the largest meeting of the independence movement in 2017. So we're here to speak to activists from lots of different groups to ask where the movement is now and what we need to do to build a majority for next time. What is the current state of the independence movement? Well, I, <clears throat> I think to some extent it's stagnated. And I've come along here today because I'm really hoping that the SIC, um, the Scottish Independence Convention, is going to become the umbrella group for all, for the whole grassroots movement. I just feel as though that there's thousands of us out there and we don't know where we're going right now. I think the current state is that it's in retreat, or at best it's stagnant. I think the main problem there is that the SNP tried to tie it to the EU referendum. This is an issue that did not work, it didn't inspire working class people, it wasn't big enough to get it back on the agenda in a big way. It's gone flat and we need to address that and I think that's why today is quite important. I think the independence movement is weak at the moment because it's done nothing for two years. Right? I don't think it's got anything to do with any particular party or organisation within it. And the big word that comes out of that is stasis, I don't think we'll move forward particularly since 2014. And that's what I'm here for is to find out how we move forward as a movement. I know I haven't heard it yet, but I'm hope. But this proves that the grassroots hasn't went away as the media would like us all to believe. If anything, I think we're stronger now. I think it's in a better place. It's taken a long time to recover the, uh, the, the, from the shock, but uh, it's beginning to be organised and I think we've got more time to organise it in a more coordinated way. The independence movement has not waned at all since uh, um, the last referendum and we can't wait for the next one. Well, I think it's quite clearly stagnated. If you have a, if you have a look in there, the crowd that we're, we're bringing in there, they're not working class young people, they're not students. We, we, where is everyone that was involved and engaged and active in 2014? And where are the young activists? Where are uh, your, your ethnic minority activists? And, and why don't they come to events like this? They are generally retired people, members of the SNP, um, and talking in a vacuum, just similarly like a conference. Um, I think that's because they've not really been making the case for independence improving any conditions for people's lives. They've been talking about independence in connection to other issues. Well, I mean, clearly the situation has changed. The last three years may as well have been three decades if you look at the changes in the political terrain. Um, 2014, of course, was a huge movement of movements. It was grassroots led. No one had to ask permission to get involved. And clearly that was uh, in part because the referendum was an actually existing reality. And now, of course, there's no referendum. The prospect of a referendum may be some time off. So what today's conference is about is about trying to grapple with some of the more difficult issues. In terms of common meal, um, we are relentless and persistent with trying to produce the policy papers, the white paper project, producing ideas um, and creating answers that we didn't have in the last referendum. So I think we're doing a lot of the groundwork and that actually gives people a lot of hope. Um, I think we're in a, I suppose, how would you say it, a layback. We're, we're shooing over lots of things that have happened, but there's so much happening out with us and I'll not go through the list. Most people have not been put a case in favour of it for the last three years. The SNP gobbled up the vast majority of the Yes movement and brought them into the party and then turned it down into safe channels of trying to look after their electoral prospects rather than looking after the case for independence. Most of us in the movement were pretty shell-shocked and um, we've all needed a bit of a we're all interested in politics and we'll never not be interested in politics, but for active campaigning, for, there was no point in it because we had just lost. So we've had a break uh, and things are 
moving on apace. Right now, at a time where we don't know where Brexit is, I think we need to understand exactly what that process means for people in Scotland and we need to be really, really good at understanding where we can take that forward so that we're doing the right things for people. How important is Brexit in building support for independence? I, I personally, this is my own personal opinion, it doesn't matter what group I'm in or whatever, I think we need to get an independence referendum before Brexit because I'm really, really, really worried about what's going to happen to the cops of Scotland. The predictions are really bad and there's that secret report that's come out and they're not letting us see what's in it. The Brexit referendum was one on just a very simple message, to take back control. Um, we could make the same point, but we've got to go a little bit further than that because it, we're not, we don't want to sloganise the thing. It's not all about the EU, but genuinely terrified about what Brexit will do. Um, I think Brexit could have a detrimental impact because we'll be so busy cleaning up the mess from that that we won't even have time to think about um, independence and how we would deal with it. We're going to be so busy trying to get ourselves out of the mess and the chaos that Brexit causes and that's my worry about Brexit. My worry about Brexit is if we wait until after Brexit's done, I'm worried about Westminster, we'll do a bit Holyrood. Uh, I'm worried that they'll strip Holyrood of all its powers and make it practically impossible for us to get a second referendum. That's my one big worry about it all. I think first of all they should clear the decks on the Brexit issue by saying we want to deal with the question of Scottish independence first, then we can have a sensible democratic debate in an independent Scotland about our relationship with the EU and all the European formations, whether or not uh, we're down the route of being in the EU. The, the focus of the movement as a whole has to be about social equality, social justice um, and gender equality of course is part of that um, and if we if we want to make that the core then of course the EU becomes relevant but it's that way around not the reverse. Do we pitch a second referendum on going back into Europe or do we pitch it on Scotland having a decision about that process and, and Scotland having its own decision about what its relationship with Europe is? For me, I think the latter would be the more sensible option, especially when such a sizeable amount of yes voters voted to leave. We know that not everybody that voted yes in 2014 necessarily voted to remain in the EU referendum. So if you make that the heart of your issue, you're not actually campaigning on the basis of Scottish independence, you're campaigning on whether or not you like the EU. Um, which we know that not all of our core vote do. I think although it's a major issue and we'll have to deal with it, I think we have to, we have to not make it the, ish, the Brexit the issue within our independence. No, because if we do, I mean, we then start opening up a schism within, internally within quote-unquote the movement that we don't need to open up. You know, do I want to be part of the EU? Do I not want to be part of the EU? I had a hell of a job voting to remain in view of what the EU didn't do to support Greece. Now look at what's happening in Catalonia. Ask me again, do I want to be part of that union? But from the prospect of an independent Scotland in the future, at the moment, I'd rather be part of that big club than to be sitting on the arse of the North Sea as part of the RUK. I think what matters is having the independence platform correct. Uh, you know, it's the positive rather than the negatives that matter. But there's no doubt if you have your platform correct, my own view is we should be advocating EFTA membership, at least as an interim. If you have a platform that unites the country, which offers a, an island of certainty and a, a sea of uncertainty, then that can greatly strengthen the, not just the independence case, but also the case for an early referendum. What issues need to be at the heart of our message to build majority support to win? We have to think about how independence situates itself alongside, for example, the development of Jeremy Corbyn. We have to work out our position on the EU, which is a huge discussion, not least because of Catalonia, which has uh, raised it as a question for so many people in the independence movement. So the left, I think, uh, independently has a huge role to play and um, part of that will, of course, be uh, deliberated for a range of discussions. That, um, that we need to have. I think the last time the campaign was driven a lot on hope and passion and while we did have a lot of ideas there was some um, 
some issues like currency and like pensions, which we just we weren't quite there yet. Um, and I think that there would have been people that were persuaded if we were a bit more sure um, and a bit more confident with those answers. Well, I think we should stand it on its head to some extent. That's not been mentioned yet here, but um, I think we've got to look at the total context. We, you could have argued a hundred years ago, Britain made sense, but now as an organisation, it's not fit for purpose. And that's been demonstrated week by week, sadly. Um, <clears throat> coming from a business background, you wouldn't run a business this way. You'd say, fine, it was a good structure at one time, but really it's got to, it's got to change, it's got to be replaced. There is only one game in town. Independence. None of the rest matters until we are independent, and people need to realise that. If independence is about anything, it's got to be about actually changing the lives of working class people in Scotland who have been disenfranchised and not listened to for generations. That's why they stopped voting Labour. That's why they voted yes in 2014. That's why some of them voted leave in the EU referendum. If we do anything, it has to be about housing, wages, employment and how independence will improve conditions for them. I think, I think there's a broad sweep of issues, but it's not the central bank, it's not the fiscal policy, it's got to be the everyday lived experience. So my question always is, at the end of the month, do you have more month or more money? And when you start talking to people about what's in their purse, what they've got and what they've not got, that's when it becomes important. How do you, what is it that you would like to see changed? You start asking people what they don't like, you start asking people what they want to change, then you say to them, well, do you think it's changing at the moment? Do you think, do you think Scotland's doing the best as possible? Or do you think maybe with independence we could make it change again? We need to be able to tell people facts and we need to be able to give people truths and we need to be able to say to people that this is how your life will be better in an independent Scotland and we can back this up and this will happen and that in itself requires coordination from grassroots, it requires coordination from um, the SNP, from Scottish Government, uh, from policy makers and people that, that chap the doors. I think moving forward from here we really really have to put women at the core of the movement because so far um, while there's been a really really strong um, sense of initiative coming out of groups like Women for Indy, there is still a problem where women are left on the fringes of political bodies, political parties, political movements, and that's a huge problem in terms of engaging voters, whereas if you put women at the, the forefront, um, then you instantly reach out to entirely new demographics. And we saw a great demonstration of that in 2014 and the run-up to it, and then since then, but we could be doing a lot more. I think more space needs to be made. I think um, you need to speak to people's personal lives um, and their circumstance and I think um, when, when you listen to some of the presentations you look at what's going on in the country with Brexit, with welfare, with people are going to get poorer and going forward. Uh, you would assume with Brexit, we need to really address those issues I think and be talking about how the independence movement might better serve. Wealth would be used from the bankers, from uh, energy, from industry, from the land, for the benefit of the people as a whole, instead of for the benefit of the 432 that own over half of Scotland's land, and of the big six energy companies, and so on, we could inspire people to a different kind of society. I think the government, the Scottish government, has to be much more radical in their policy approaches, um, and much more open to moving if people don't think they're getting it right. Um, they, they don't really seem to be open to moving on policy if people don't think they're getting it right. They dig their heels in a little. I think they need to be a bit more malleable on that. Um, but I do think they need to be more radical um, and put into practice some of the policies that they were talking about during the referendum. I feel you cannot exaggerate the importance of self-organisation. It's what Scotland's been weak in because we've always waited for somebody to tell us what today. And the idea that people are just doing it is actually transformational. It's the same as what the Catalans have done for decades. They've been self-organised in small groups. That to me is like a great sign. But the groups are sort of beginning to think, how do we talk to one another properly? How do we have events that are perhaps more interactive than today? Because it's, you know, a whole usher hall. And that's going to be the next stage is lots of regional groupings and training for people so they feel more confident about speaking. 
Basically, I would love to do things like, I really think we should have a, a hub in every town in Scotland for a start off, and to combat the message coming from the mainstream media. We should have, have windows full of uh, information for people that just happen to be passing by. The movement needs to be diverse, it needs to be representative. It's not about a party, it's about gaining independence for, for everyone. And I think if you look back to the Yes Advisory Board, it was made up of not just the SNP, the SSP were on it, the Greens were there. And we need to keep that going. We need to keep the diversity in the movement so that it's not just stuck in electoral politics, it's out doing grassroots movements on the streets and keeping the agenda. That's why an independent socialist Scotland is not an add-on extra, it's not an optional extra, it's an essential argument to win the case for independence in Scotland.